Hello, this is Mark from IMNG Organic, and today is April 10th, 2016, and it's time to plant. Well, maybe. We got a good freeze last night. It's only about 27 degrees out right now, and things froze, and the ground's pretty frozen. We're going to take some soil temperatures. But what we can do is plant a kind of a cover crop into the leaves today, which we're going to be doing. And I'm also going to show you how the uh, winter rye came up and we planted some strawberries in the wood chips already. And I also planted some crimson clover. We're going to take a closer look at that in a little bit. It rained all day yesterday and last night it got down to 27 degrees. You can see it froze that puddle pretty well. So it got pretty cold last night. Here in this row, I have my 100 foot trellis in and we planted some winter rye in here. I also threw some crimson clover. I didn't mention it in the last video because I didn't know how it was going to react. But I figured let me try and make the mistake. If it doesn't grow, then I will educate you and recommend it in the future. But you can see here that it's growing very nicely. It's nice and green. That's the winter rye. And we'll get a better close up and I'll show you some of that crimson clover. Now you can see here, I also bought a new temperature gauge. I was at Walmart the other day and I saw this for about nine bucks. Uh, it's a meat thermometer, but it works really great for soil too. Uh, it's worth the nine dollars to buy it and you're gonna use it the rest of your life. It comes with a battery and it says it's about 38 degrees in the soil. And behind the thermometer to the left over here, you can see the crimson clover growing. That's that little kind of heart-shaped leaf. So that's doing very well also. Now this is my third row over in the back to Eden wood chips. Um, I did a combination of planting the winter rye, the crimson clover, and also here I planted is some strawberry plants. You can see here, every uh, say 10 feet I planted some strawberry plants in a little bit of a raised bed. And then also I, I stopped at the, the 10 feet and just let the clover and the winter rye grow and then plant another 10 feet of strawberry plants again also too. But I want to point out here something very interesting. I just want to show you here how soil temperature affects uh, growing. Now, the both plants, both strawberry plants, the one in the pot and the one in the ground were planted at the same day. The one in the pot is purely grown in leaf mold. And you can see how big it is. That was grown in my greenhouse. My greenhouse is not heated. Uh, whatever the nighttime temperature is, it gets down to the same as outside. But it has a better chance of warming up during the day and staying warm a little bit longer through the night. And you can see how the difference is between that one that's in the pot and then what's in, what's in the ground. Again, they were planted on the same day in the same type of material. And this is my fourth row in the back to Eden. I actually filled it in with some soil, so I have to uh, make that soil good again because I put a lot of air into it. So we're gonna be planting strawberry plants into there. We're gonna plant 300 in this row on the right-hand side of the row. And on the left-hand side, we're gonna be planting uh, radishes and beets. And in my fifth row here, you can see that we have a little bit of a ditch and we're gonna reopen that up again. Uh, we're gonna be planting 300 feet of baby red potatoes, dark red Norland baby red potatoes. I also want to give you an update. I also planted sunflower seeds a little while back. They came up and they were doing good. A couple of them got hit by frost and didn't make it. But the majority of the ones that did make it, uh, what I'm showing you here in the holes in the ground, is that I have a family of groundhogs. There's about, say, five of them. There's a mom and four babies. Uh, I don't know how they all got here, but we're trying to relocate them as quick as possible. So here we are in a leaf field. Uh, it's been rototilled once, uh, not touching the soil, but just going down about, say, four inches into the leaves. The leaves are about a foot thick. And what I just do is I just kind of bring up those decayed leaves to the surface and mix them with the dry leaves on top. And that gives me a good planting medium to plant into. I have four types of seeds that we're gonna be using into the leaf mold here. And I'll describe them. We're gonna go from left to right. On the left-hand side, is our chickling vetch here. Then we have our crimson clover, our field peas, and our winter rye. And I just use my seed spreader that I wear in front of me and basically it's just a handle crank and a white disc on the bottom spins around and will throw the seed out at least anywhere from five to 10 feet depending on how fast you spin it. 
You can see our soil temperature here is about 48 degrees in the leaves. That's about a foot down, right at the soil level. And our little small thermometer here is, uh, what, 37 degrees. Not bad. Um, the winter rye and all the other uh, type of seeds only need about 35 degrees to start germinating. You can see that the seeds fall out the bottom. You can just turn the handle and they spin out. Now we have our seeds spread all over the leaf mold and now we're just going to rototill them in. The blade's only going to go down about maybe say two inches to get it into that leaf mold. So with planting all these seeds into the leaf mold over the whole area, and I'm not worried about them blocking out the squash or cucumbers or anything else they go to plant in here, because I'll make the rows wide enough so it doesn't interfere with the growth habit of, that, of those items. But I'm gonna be collecting as much solar energy as I can, and also carbon, and pumping it back down into the soil and making it as healthy as possible. Now I'm gonna be able to cover this whole area in a, almost a green field. So I'm getting the benefits of having a, a high residue of fungus sitting here from my soil, but I'm also going to be building soil with all those roots that are gonna be going down into the ground and to make it uh, aggregates and also to form uh, glomalin down there too. You can see how beautiful that leaf mold has turned out since we put it down, the full leaves down in October, about a foot and a half thick. And now it's about, say, eight inches thick. And it's turned into this great planting medium for those seeds. And we did absolutely nothing except maybe rototilled it once. And now when I say rototilled, please remember, I do not hit the soil. I only go always down about, say, three or four inches or about half the thickness of the leaves just to re-aerate it again. But the stuff looks magnificent. I thank you very much for watching. I will go over in more details of planting every individual thing. Uh, I just want to spend about five or ten minutes on each uh, item so you get a good idea of what I'm doing. I didn't want to rush through it and make this video too long, but we're going to go into more details and you'll see it in other videos of how I plant uh, the other items up into the wood chips and also into the leaves. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thanks.